The GameCube is a legendary console filled with a vast majority of AAA titles that have left a mark on many gamers and developers alike, including the famed Super Smash Bros. Melee, which is still being played in tournaments today. While it introduced a huge tourney scene to Smash, galleries, and trinkets, such as trophies highlighted in Nintendo's video game history and beyond, including an odd-looking big yellow giant and a big red demon? The Love Giant and the Hate Giant were simply known as such, being an unknown IP to the United States. Doshin the Giant, however, has gained slight attention in Japan on the Nintendo 64 disk drive, a legendary zip drive add-on for the 64 that has never left its country, but also released a port on the GameCube for PAL and Japan regions only. So this kind of setup is perfect for port versus port a series highlighting the differences and similarities between the vanilla and port versions of a singular title. Somewhat rather unbecoming to see Doshin being released on a Nintendo 64, which is a console that, while has met much critical acclaim, this bottom thing has really not, and has only seen, a, what, a, like a shelf life about a year? So, to be reviewing a game for uh, a failed peripheral, and to kind of be reviewing it over regions that were never released in the US is also a rather unique case. But I thought this was a wonderful way to display the love for the Nintendo 64. And hopefully people can see that the God Simulation series really is something that's kind of wonderful and not really talked about in the gaming community. And Doshin is a wonderful example that I hope people will enjoy. It's a very blissful and unique game. And if you really do like games that allow you to relax and just enjoy the environment, the foliage, and everything that's around you, this is a wonderful title to do it. So I present to you Kyojin no Doshin, Doshin the Giant for the Nintendo 64 and GameCube. Kyojin no Doshin or Doshin the Giant is a god simulation game first introduced on the Nintendo 64 disk drive add-on, allowing players to interact with nearby villages to nurture their needs or practically destroy them. Story tells of a legendary giant who rises from the sea and bestows benevolence or betrayal upon its inhabitants and you are the sole provider of their fate. Monuments are the objective of this game and by tending to their needs, they can create monuments representing their culture, all in an effort to expand your collection. Each village, represented by a color, has very basic needs necessary to expanding their village. The first being Rakuen no Energi, roughly translating to paradise or green energy, allows your villagers to build houses, buildings, and monuments for village expansion. They ask you to either raise or lower the land to allow for easier construction of resources. Fulfilling their needs generates hate or love, depending on your actions, and getting a full ring allows you to grow in size. X factors are also thrown into the game such as special boxes, which can spawn trees, love, hate, and different color villagers. And finally, we have natural born disasters, ranging from tornadoes to volcanoes with you being the sole protector of these villages to fully eliminate them. Each day lasts about 30 minutes in real time, so while activities in this game can be minimal, it allows for a very calming and relaxed experience that few god simulators can achieve instead of keeping players busy with many interactive tasks. Overall, Doshin provides a uniquely blissful experience few games can provide, but what improvements, or even faults, the GameCube version contains? Just like the world of Doshin, the GameCube improvements are night and day. Uh, it's no secret, while Doshin provides a distinct perspective on God Simulation, it contains an incredible amount of hardware limitations that can turn people off to the experience. Graphical fidelity is pretty poor with very low frame rates, detail is minimal with Doshin having a nice Play-Doh etched smile, draw distance that makes Spider-Man fog look like a masterpiece, and a sorely needed zoom function that encompasses 75% yellow boy. The GameCube version, however, sets out to rectify and expand those elements that made Doshin strong while added some much needed love to our giant friend. Doshin the Giant on the GameCube was only released both in PAL regions and Japan and never came over to the States. Doshin's absence in the US was solely due to a deal between Atlas and Nintendo to localize specific titles 
and chose Kibavor to be localized in the US rather than Doshin. The GameCube would allow for a yellow friend to grow including the world around him with expanded mechanics, gameplay elements, and better quality of life features. The most obvious of the bunch is how the game is visually presented. Doshin is running at 480i, a solid 60 frames per second that may dip from time to time, but a yellow giant has never looked better. Doshin has more frames and polygons to work with, as well as our cute little villagers running around demanding things from Doshin like the little shits they are. Every single one of them. The environment has changed for the better, with landscapes appearing much greener and less washed out compared to the N64, with clearer textures when raising and lowering the land. Villagers are given more frames of animation, whether through their travels or the cute little dancing animations. Flora and Fauna are given a huge increase in visual strides, adding livestock and fish to the world, giving just that touch of life. The draw distance has never looked better, with fog almost eliminated, allowing you to see mountains in the foreground islands to the point of seeing villager requests in the distance. The N64 could barely hold its own in draw distance, seeing as far as Doshin's feet and nothing more. Needless to say, Doshin is a very pretty game with plenty of care and attention given to brighten up the title for an expanding audience. What truly makes the GameCube version such a pleasure to play are some of the quality of life features that make assisting villagers and obtaining monuments an easier experience. Our friendly guide Sodoru has an added personal memo in the start menu that allows us to see the monuments each village type has currently acquired, on top of how to gain future monuments by combining different villages. New zoom features have also been added to the map menu when monuments have started or natural disasters are occurring so you can take action at a whim. Monument building has been a bit easier this time around by the addition of raising trees from the dead. See, the problem with the N64 version was that while green energy allowed the growth of a village, the eventuality of trees to become finite become more problematic. To streamline the game, the raising of trees from the dead allows for more growth and possibilities, and while you may not get the monument that you need, you can continue to play until you gain that building. Not everything about this version provides love, and some elements triggers the hate in me. Although they are necessary to completing the game, the villagers have never been more specific in demands. The upgraded technology of the GameCube unfortunately comes with the pickiest and most demanding NPCs in gaming asking our giant to either raise or lower the land. But it has to be at specific places. For example, the villagers in this segment are asking me to raise the land, which I am, however, they require it to be at very specific points on the map. The N64 was simpler as a general portion of the area was adequate to meeting the whining villagers, but you can easily gain a mob of villagers demanding and sassing you. And this brings us to our lovable Joshin Giant, which is Doshin's evil alter ego and allows for strikingly different mechanics. Joshin has retained his original moveset from the N64 version, such as higher texture explosions from unleashing fireballs. However, hate grows strong, and so does Joshin as well. He has been given wings for a new gliding technique to traverse the land. Transitioning from good to evil makes more sense as it allows you to catapult your way through the island, helping or even killing villagers. While this mechanic is absent in the N64 version, being able to hop around the section to section allows for the pacing to become that much more enjoyable. Lastly, daily segments are a bit longer than on the N64 version, allowing for more activities in the day and easier methods to grind for those monuments. Doshin gives a healthy dose of environmental interaction while stopping to take in everything the game provides. The GameCube version is a love letter for those who want to bring a smile to others' faces. So on one side, we have the Nintendo 64 version, which is pretty hard and cumbersome to get because of a peripheral that's probably about $600. And then we have the GameCube version, which has been released everywhere else except the US. So it's a really interesting conundrum to see both titles not released in the US. But what's cool is, is that we have a couple year difference between the N64 and the GameCube. And we're going to see both of those match together in what I love to do and to compare both of them together with some direct footage. So in a regular port versus port fashion, let's see what both of them look like and let's see what you guys 
love and what's the version you guys want to pick not the one that I want let's begin the only thing I can do is to continue to keep watch over this island. Very slowly he approaches. The Earth of Dirtland has no energy. It looks like the humans want some trees in this area. You can use the magic power to raise the level ground. It looks like the humans want to create their buildings on level ground. You can also use the magic power to lower the level of the ground. <laughs> it shows their will to stand on the land. You know, a funny little story, when I actually bought this thing a couple back, I think it was in 2015, I never would have thought in my entire life I would actually be, one, recording off of this big goddamn behemoth, and two, actually showing one of my favorite peripherals that is yet failed. But it is genuinely one of my favorite peripherals just because of how unique the zip drive is, and it really feels nice to show people what this thing can really do, and what Nintendo has done in order to kind of work on top of what they've been wanting to build. So that makes me really happy that I can show you one of my personal loves. And I really do love this baby. So it, it makes me really happy to show you this and the GameCube version. But thank you guys so much for really checking out this video. This video was a labor of love. It really makes me happy to show you guys uh, Doshin and the Nintendo 64 disk drive. And I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you loved the video, you know what to do the like and subscribe all that jazz also letting you guys know i do live stream a lot on my twitch 9 p.m pacific time you can find all the links down below and show you when i'm streaming doing video production i'm doing console cleaning i'm doing a lot on my twitch honestly so i hope you guys would be enjoying that the first video of 2020 i know i've been lagging on my stuff and work and uh trying to find a new job has been taking its toll i will say but i'm doing what i can to really improve my video editing game since i do want to become an editor and with constructive criticism i hope you guys enjoy this video and let me know what you think sincerely i really thank you guys for sticking with me and i hope to see you very soon on future videos take care